Thank you for joining me, ladies and gentlemen. We're about to go back, way back, to the very beginning, to this. The Greeks called this lithos, the Greek word for stone, a very large stone. You'll see this word come up when we're studying the Stone Age, which we refer to typically in terms of various lithic periods. First of those is the Paleolithic period. The Paleolithic period is defined as the Old Stone Age, coming from the Greek words palaios, meaning old, and lithos, meaning stone. And the Paleolithic period lasted until around 10,000 BC. And humans subsisted exclusively by hunting and gathering. And because of this, they were nomadic, going from place to place following the food supply. Paleolithic people have given us a great deal of art in the form of cave art and Venus figurines, both of which we'll look at shortly. Some of you may have heard of the Paleo Diet, which is a new diet fad. The premise of the Paleo diet is to eat exactly how our earliest ancestors ate before they settled down. So if something's Paleo, it's something that could be hunted or gathered. Here is a little flow chart here where you can see if you've got any questions, here is what you can eat, what you can't eat. No peanuts because that's an agricultural product. Other nuts are okay don't eat rocks, okay? If it's an egg, sure. But no dairy, no wheat or grain, because as you can see, corn is a grain. Corn is a product of agriculture. During the Paleolithic period, people did not eat corn. Let's take a look at the art of the Paleolithic period, which we see on the walls of caves. This is a horse. What sound does a horse make? Good good. All right, you're paying attention. You're very, very smart for somebody who's in kindergarten. Animals are going to be the primary subjects of cave art. Keep in mind, these people had to hunt and gather their food. They couldn't just go to the supermarket. They spent a lot of time going hungry. Here we see various horses and cows. What's a cow say? That's right. Once again, very, very good. There's a close-up. Some pretty good art here. I'll go ahead and tell you, I couldn't do this. You see the detail around the eyes, and keep in mind that this person didn't have a cow just posing for him. Probably did this from memory. Talented artist. One of the world's first sculptors here, sculpting these bison reliefs. These are in France. Uh, they were done between 15,000 and 10,000 BC. Uh, but somebody just thought, I'll, I'll produce some art rhinoceri or rhinoceroses. The Altamira cave is known as the Sistine Chapel of cave art uh, because they've got the ceiling that is just full of what you see here. The most uh, prominent being this Altamira bison, which keep in mind these people would have eaten a lot of bison. People still eat bison today. Very good meat. And what is this? Well, let me tell you, that's why you're watching this video, right? This is the Venus of Willendorf, found in Willendorf, Austria. This was somebody's idea of art about 27,000 years ago. Now, why is she called Venus? She's called Venus after the Roman goddess of love and beauty. Now, of course, you're looking at the Roman goddess, and then you're looking at this Venus, and then you're looking back at this Venus, and you're thinking there's really not that much of a correlation here, is there? At least Roman Venus doesn't think so. Let's take a look at some more Venus figurines. You can see one here. One here. Whoa, where's your head? And one here. This one's got a head. Okay. Now, we see that they all have something in common. If we're asking why, well, let's take a look at the torso. We see all of them have protruding bellies. And so when we're asking why, we can't say for sure because we don't have any written evidence, but odds are these had something to do with childbirth and wanting children, maybe good luck charms, maybe items of religious significance, then again, maybe not. 
we don't really understand the idea of carrying around a little figurine with us because we don't really, in our society, like to have a lot of children. If you look at fertility rates in the United States, you see that they kind of peaked in the 1950s after going down uh, for the Depression and the war. But ever since the 1960s, we see that the birth rate has plummeted, where the average family only has two or three children. We don't understand the whole concept of childbirth for survival of the species. This was something for these people that was critical. In order to survive, you had to not only eat, but have children. And so when you look at this Paleolithic art, you can see the art of people who were struggling to survive, who thought about two things primarily, food and babies. Moving on to the Mesolithic period, which is kind of a transitional period. Now, when you think Mesolithic, go ahead and think of our husky friend here. This is when we tame dogs. Not a whole lot is changing. We're still hunting and gathering, just becoming better at what we do. The Middle Stone Age would be defined from Mesos, from the Greek meaning middle, and again, Lithos meaning stone. And this transition occurred around 10,000 B.C., plus or minus. And we see evidence during this time that people got their food through hunting and gathering. Also, some evidence of fishing showing up around this time. People are still nomadic because they are still chasing the food supply. But they are chasing the food supply better than they ever have. What we see here is the first evidence of domestication of dogs. Dogs, being man's best friend, also man's oldest friend, our partner in the hunt. You take the human brain and the human opposable thumbs, human technology, and you combine it with a dog's speed, a dog's sense of smell, a dog's hearing. You've got a nice little partnership. Everybody eats better. So for some time, human beings are content just being a little bit better at hunting and gathering. And then we have the Neolithic Revolution, which is distinguished by agriculture and settled communities, which are a product of agriculture. If someone tells you they're on the paleo diet, you can say, I'm on a diet too. I'm on the Neo diet, the new diet. This is what we eat now. The term Neolithic comes from the Greek words neos, meaning new, and lithos, meaning stone. And this lasts from about 10,000 to 4,000 B.C. And it is characterized more than anything by agriculture and by settled communities. Uh, now that people know how to grow crops, they can settle down somewhere. And they also figure out how to domesticate livestock, which to have stock is to have food, livestock. These are animals that are grown for food, to eat. Cattle, sheep goats, pigs, and people have figured out how to keep themselves in one place, how to keep their food supply in one place. One of the most complete Neolithic communities that we have access to today is in Cattle Hoyuk, which is a Neolithic city in modern-day Turkey. Dates to about 6,000 BC. Now, how do we know about this? We know about this because of archaeology. Archaeologists are the people who dig and they uncover the past. Here we see a we see this seated woman. She's in the mother goddess style of the Venus figurines, but we can see something that is uniquely Neolithic about the sculpture. And this is just not some woman by herself, but she is seated in a chair. Really nice fancy chair flanked by a couple of lionesses or something like that. And what you can see here that this is Neolithic, this is made by someone who is settled down. Someone who has property, which is one of the ingredients of civilization. Archaeologists have been able to give us a pretty good picture of how people would have lived in Catalhoyuk. They have reconstructed this based on archaeological evidence. And the city itself would have looked something like this. Now notice that the city is built uh, on a river. You can see here sheep, livestock, and then out here in the back you can see the fields. And then you've got these houses uh, that you see people on the roof, and the city is built in a way that would be defensible, that would protect people from outsiders. And so just to review, 
we have the Old, Middle, and the New Stone Age. Keep in mind that the Neolithic period is distinguished by agriculture, by settled communities. Throughout most of the course of human existence, human beings have been hunting and gathering. If we look at the Mesolithic period, we have the domestication of dogs, more complex technologies. And in the Paleolithic period, we have the cave art, the Venus figurines, things that are typical of people who are doing little more than surviving, following the food supply, and trying to have babies. By the Neolithic period, we have agriculture, we have settled down, but does that make us civilized? We've got fire agriculture, cities. But what's missing? If you guessed writing, you are absolutely correct. And Odin's ravens will fly that down to humanity in due time, but that's another story. Until then, if you liked what you saw here, feel free to visit my website, tomritchie.net. I'm on Twitter, YouTube, Facebook. Please follow, subscribe, and like. Until next time.